as some of you know, I'm kind of the energy guy. So I was looking for something that uh, might be able to help some of the Western Oklahoma uh, producers. And that's kind of hard sometimes in, in energy, but it turns out when I started looking at water and irrigation, there's a nice match up there. And uh, so I'm gonna talk about uh, some efficiency issues that uh, might be able to help customers out with. I kind of like this. I'm convinced if I put this up in a museum of art that people would stand around and try to figure out what the author or the painter was trying to do. <laughs> most, most people don't know what that is, but uh, that's about 10 miles north of uh, Guyman. Anyway, <clears throat> so this slide is kind of the, the situation. You all know it. Um, I think uh, Larry and some other folks went through it quite a bit. So very susceptible to drought in western Oklahoma. And I liked what uh, Saleh was showing us, and that's how during drought the more pressure goes onto the groundwater. And so now that resource starts to really get hit hard. And that's not going to, if, if we overuse it, obviously we're going to pull it out quicker than it recharges. So we irrigate quite a bit during drought. and so. That puts a lot of pressure on. This is from the 2008 study. Really should have gone to the 2013. Numbers are even bigger. So uh, quite a bit of uh, sprinkler irrigation, and that's just going to increase, right? I mean, we even see sprinkler irrigation occurring now in what Georgia and Florida, where they get lots of rainfall, but they like the the predictive uh, ability of you know irrigating. So uh, I guess we're going to see more and more of it. This is this number right here, 3,700 irrigation wells in Oklahoma. That's probably over 4,000. That's from the uh, 2008. So this is kind of interesting. This is where I start to get kind of interested in it. Um, estimated energy cost to irrigate approximately $32 million a year for all these folks. So simple math, almost $9,000 per year per well. So for a lot of these producers, that's one of the most uh, large expenses they have during the year. So anything in extension we can do or research to chip away at that is, is valuable. Valuable for us and valuable for our customers. So for me, <clears throat> I've also been interested in water, but usually on the industrial side, also interested in pollution and hazardous materials. But there's two main resources of interest here, obviously, water, and now I'm gonna talk a little bit about energy. So for, for water, the drought is gone, yay, no, it'll be back, right? As Dr. Sanders was showing, just it's periodic, so it'll be back. Um, plus, the added pressure from irrigation, so this is just, this issue is not going away by any means, so we need to look at it. On the energy side, there's the, there's the cost, the amount of energy we use. There's also a connection between water and energy too, right? Do you remember one of those graphs actually showed how much water it takes to produce electric power? Kind of surprising. And uh, electric power is used a lot for this irrigation stuff too. So this, there's a lot of linkages between energy and water. It's called the energy water nexus. But for, for my customers, cost is a major thing for your customers. And then there's also environmental concerns too with this. If, if I'm doing too much work, in other words, energy or power, then I'm polluting and doing other things that I don't need to do. Anytime I do any activity, I'm going to pollute. That's a given, right? But if I'm doing stuff I don't need to do, then I don't need to be doing that type of thing. That's, that's a major concern, or a minor concern as far as this conversation, but we'll, we'll, we'll hit on it a little bit. So for me, efficiency and conservation go together. Uh, they're two different things though, right? The ultimate conservation is what? Just turn it off, right? Well, we can't do that. So we have to go to efficiency, see if we can be a little more efficient. So I would ask, uh, you know, in this course, a loaded question, are we doing the best we can with the current groundwater irrigation in Oklahoma? That's uh, uh, the old question you got in high school, right? It can't be yes. Um, We'll talk about this a little bit, and this was looked at um, earlier on too. There are others that want access to this water. There's industrial, there's urban centers that want access to this water. And I'm not going to say there's going to be water wars about this, but there will be competition for it, right? So let me just ask you, what would you guess is the average energy efficiency of eh, 
10-year-old uh, center pivot system in western Oklahoma. Energy efficient means I give it a unit of energy and I get out a unit of energy of water, in other words, pumped water. Many guesses? You know this is a loaded question, right? Too low, below 20%. 20? Kind of low-balled it. Two to one, fifty percent. Well, the answer is we don't really know, and that's that's the problem. We can we can guess at this though because there's been other studies. There's even been studies in Oklahoma. Some of you remember Sam Harp and Mike Kaiser and those folks, and and they did some studies kind of like this. Um, here we go, California. They, they, of course, you can imagine there's a lot of pressure on them to uh, to look at this stuff. Um, 13,000 center pivots, on average efficiency of about 56%. We'll talk about kind of what that means. Not the 80 to 95 that some of the vendors and manufacturers were claiming. So, uh-oh. Uh, in Oklahoma, approximately 50% of the systems are natural gas with an estimated efficiency of only 7 to 9%. So that means for every dollar of energy you feed this thing, you get about eight cents worth of water power out. That's a lot of waste. A uh, Texas sh uh, study showed on also pretty dismal. Here's a, here's a natural gas uh, irrigation rig out to, uh, let's see, this one, I think this one was Goodwill, yeah. And um, so anyway, I think this is a diesel engine that's converted over to a natural gas and this is actually a pretty good one. I mean, um, there were some much older ones. I just didn't take any pictures of it. But uh, also notice, uh, you can't see in the photograph, but there's actually a creek that's running not too far away from this. And these cans of things. And so when we do this study, we're going to, uh, we're not going to nail somebody on, on any of this because that's not our job or our interest, but we will mention things like this. This really kind of needs a dike around it or something, you know. Um, does that make a difference, really? Well, it might when you start having competition for water and who's doing what, who's keeping their house clean. So this is, uh, this is at the cotton field. Um, this is an electric one. Uh, kind of interesting. This is all built by the farmer, by the way. These guys are really great. Um, this is belt driven. There's inefficiencies in belts and stuff too. And uh, it's hydraulic, so the uh, belt powers a hydraulic motor that feeds out to the, to the wheels and then it comes back with another belt. And I kept looking at this thing going, God, I hope I don't trip and fall into that. <laughs> it would just chew me up. Here's a, here's a vertical uh, motor and shaft, which is probably most of what we'll see. This is a little unusual. This is kind of a hybrid. But, I mean, you see a lot of different stuff out there. Um, but as, as I was looking at this, it's like, geez, that looks like a fingerprint. And that's kind of what it is. This is for a particular pump. Um, so depending on, on what the uh, total head pressure is and um, what your flow capacity is that you're, that you're wanting, you, you can see what the efficiency is. And the, the reason I put this up here is what's, what's happening to the depth of these wells over time? It's going down, right? So things are changing. And what's happening to the impeller that's in these pumps? They're wearing, they're changing. What I want to be is right in here. That's the high efficiency point. But over time, this, this point just kind of migrates off, just naturally, as the uh, well gets deeper and things wear. And so after 10, 20 years, I could be way over here in the 50% range. We just, we don't know. So this, this is just here to show you that uh, it's kind of a tenuous grip on this high efficiency point. As things change over time, it just it drifts off. I had a guy in the industry tell me one time, yeah, all the energy savings are with the low-hanging fruit, which is good. The problem is that it always grows back, right? So the problems always grow back. Uh, stuff that uh, was looked at before and fixed is probably by now back bad again. Here's electric diesel, natural gas. This is from a uh, University of Nebraska study, uh, NPC. Kind of, these are the standards that several states have kind of adopted. This is for the overall efficiency of the, uh, of the system, which is what we're going to test. And, and here you'll see some of those numbers for electric. This is the electric motor and the pump, okay? 
So 65% total system efficiency would actually be pretty darn good. We think when we go out there and test them, we're going to find in the 40s and 50s. Um, and that doesn't sound like much, but a small percentage of a really big number is still a big number, right? We'll take a look at some costs here. Here's diesel, 18%. And of course, we're, we're drawing a different boundary around it. This is just relative. Um, 18 would be pretty good, actually. Uh, let's see, natural gas. And we can, we can test this. Um, electric is pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Dustin, uh, we've hired over there, is going to be working with uh, my research engineer, and we're going to be going around testing some of these. I don't, you know, when I, when I encounter this in, in industry, I ask the same thing. And the answer is that people are like, I've, they almost have blinders on. It's like I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get product out the door. I don't, I'm not too interested in this stuff. Um, this is not my business type of thing. Um, and I understand that. Here's, here's some dollars just to give you a kind of an idea. This is 50% efficiency, 75%. So this is electric. Um, this would be a really messed up pump of some kind because big electric motors, even bad ones, are usually up around 80, 90% efficient. So something's messed up in the pump, um, may clogged up, wore out, whatever, or the pump is missized and never got it right. Um, if we can correct that, maybe it's something fairly simple. Um, even something like a variable speed drive might be able to do a lot of this. Um, Quite a bit of quite a bit of money savings. So what about six, five thousand, six thousand dollars, something like that. We've got a couple of calculators that run this type of stuff. If, if you have a question about it, we can call up and we can put pencil to it. Um, natural gas, similar type numbers. Um, I just recently had a press release where I was saying electric was cheaper than fossil fuels, and then the fossil fuel stuff took a dive in price and made me out a liar. Um, so that's, that's the energy side, but we just saw Dr. Tagvian, so it gets worse, right? <laughs> Problems in the way this thing is run, right? The scheduling and all that kind of stuff. Wrong pressures, I got the wrong nozzles. Well, we were out at one place and everything was a little bit dry and we looked over across the road, just green, lush, and it's like, what's going on over there? And they're like, oh, that guy runs that 24-7. Like, why? I, Nobody knew. So that's, that's all operations, right? So that actually can trump energy. If you can, if you can go after the energy and operational efficiency. Uh, so, so how would you test that? Well, you, you'd get somebody like this fellow right here to do soil moisture testing and things like that. Combine the two and you've, got, you've pretty much figured this uh, irrigation system out. So this is uh, kind of the program that uh, we've got going that's uh, starting up. Uh, got a couple of grants, much appreciated. So we're implementing an energy water irrigation efficiency testing program. Well, that's a mouthful. Um, we'd like to expand it in time. And uh, first round of tests should be done by November. We're actually, we'll be out in the field in two weeks trying to do the, some of the panhandle stuff. Second round starting after that, moving down into the uh, was it Fort Supply, Aquifer, Fort Cobb. Limited number of sites in the beginning, and if it works out, then we'll try to expand it. So, the, so what we look at specifically is the current energy efficiency of the pumps and the drivers, the current water application efficiency, which is Dr. Tagbian. Combine the two, you've got a pretty good idea what's going on. Improvement recommendations, if we can figure it out. Um, projected energy and cost savings, and then it's up to the producer to, okay, is this something you want to do? Is the payback reasonable? Three years, four years, 20 years? Uh, and we're also going to just go ahead and crunch some environmental numbers while we're at it, uh, do a life cycle assessment on it. Um, probably because that's going to be asked of people eventually. So what do some of the potential solutions to these things look like? Well, proper pump fitment, if we can narrow it down to the pump and it's a pump that's missized and things like that, then we can generate some pretty big efficiency improvements, at least on paper. Of course, to a Yanka, pump out of the ground is not cheap, right? Um, variable speed drives, 
I like these things. But you wouldn't want to hook one of these up to a piece of junk pump that's all rotted out, right? So got to figure out what's going on. Uh, pressure regulation on the water side, this is, this is the big one. Um, but that, this is getting people to do things differently, um, like scheduling, things like that. For the internal combustion engines, tune them up. Sounds crazy. Um, check electric motors for things like phase imbalance, age, stuff like that. Um, probably 10% at least. And then the little things, but little things add up like the coupling alignments. Hey, uh, so here's a, anybody know what this is? Anybody recognize this thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that's an old, it's a GM. It's an old truck engine. It's a, I think they were called a Thunder. That's a V12. Um, 702 cubic inches. Anyway, these things have popped up in Nebraska. The reason I put this here is, uh, you know, this was built in, what, 1962? So, over time, and this thing's probably a lot of fun to tinker with. That's the other part, is the fun to tinker with thing. That's hard to quantify. But uh, probably not the most efficient thing. This is a, this is a phase imbalance. So when we're out there looking at the electric motors, if something's really off, we've got, we've got infrared, so we'll, there's different ways to tell if, if it's phase imbalance or if it's a connector that's gone bad. But anyway, so, so you can go after the electrics also. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. This is what it's supposed to look like. This looks like a, I don't know, oatmeal cookie or something. Um, um, the couplings, um, misalignments on the shafts don't sound like much, two or three percent, but hey. Um, this one, I, I don't know how well you can see this, people here can see it, but why, why wouldn't they just move this motor a little bit? It's just on a stand, so you've got an angle here and you've got an angle here. That's probably about two or three percent energy efficiency lost. So anyway, and then there's other stuff that's a, so, that we don't really get a cost on that well, but uh, if, if you're off the efficiency curve, you're doing things like heating up components and vibration and stuff, so you're, you're breaking stuff faster than you have to. So anyway, um, kind of finish this up a little bit. We talked about this a little bit. Um, there's probably going to be competition for this groundwater at some point, and so um, our agricultural folks need to be on top of this as much as they can. Um, you just have to look at California to see how nasty things can get. Um, what was the name of that movie where it was about the water wars that Jack Nicholson in the 20s and 30s? Anyway, could that happen in Oklahoma? Sure, sure it could. And if it does, we want to be able to show that our irrigators are on top of the efficiency and environmental issues. They know what's going on. Because if you're asked questions like, how efficient are you or how much CO2 is released, we don't know is not a good answer. Like the answer I gave you. That's, that's, yeah, it depends. But it depends is probably not going to do too good in a water negotiation.